Hello, everybody. My name is Stuart, and I am here with Frontline Foam once again to assemble another blaster. Today, we are assembling the legendary Caliburn. Uh, the Caliburn is probably my favorite blaster by far, um, and it is a really solidly designed, high performing, very customizable, and reliable blaster for sure. And uh, whether you are a very experienced nerfer, foam flinger, or you're just getting into it, I, I highly recommend it, period. It's a very, very good blaster. And you'll hear all about why. There's a lot to say about this blaster. There are a lot of upgrades that can go into it. I am today building basically a default caliber. No serious upgrades, no serious bells and whistles, just the default. Um, I will talk as we go here and there about certain upgrades that you can get. Um, as we go, I'll mention how certain upgrades are installed and just some general things to know about them. I'm just kind of, I'm going to let my thoughts come out as I go, think out loud. But keep in mind that this is default. Another thing to keep in mind is um, the advice that I want to try and give in this build guide video is, is going to be pretty valuable. I have built probably hundreds of Caliburns in my time here with Frontline Foam um, of all shapes and sizes. And so hopefully, you know, the advice that I give can really help you get the best performance you can and the best reliability out of your Caliburn. Uh, these printed parts are from us. You can get a hardware kit from us as well, and it can look exactly like this, and you can follow right along. So um, another thing is this <clears throat> this blaster is definitely one of the easier blasters to assemble. Uh, it's There's not too much to worry about in severe complexity. It does kind of depend on the upgrades. Like if you get brass, the difficulty does go up quite a bit. But if you're keeping things pretty default, it's going to be a nice and simple build. So hopefully this video will give you what you need to get yours working great. So to get started, we are going to build the front half. Uh, we kind of are going to do the front, ha front half and then the rear half and then just throw it all together. But before I do that, just a couple other things I wanted to mention. I'm going to be talking about a lot of upgrades and such as we go and I'll mention them and I probably will repeat myself a couple times. Um, but do stay tuned for the end of the video. At the end of the video, I'm gonna look over the whole blaster and talk about a lot of my personal recommendations for upgrades, both cosmetic and performance centered. Um, so do keep that in mind and, or if you're not interested in the build, just skip to the end to see that. Definitely worth tuning into. There is the Caliburn and the Talonclaw. They are very similar. So a lot of things that I do here will apply to building the Talonclaw. However, there might be a couple things that are different. Um, it's very likely that we will have a Talonclaw guide video coming out to help with that. So this is specifically for the Caliburn. Like I said, it's a pretty simple build and given that it's a pretty simple build, we're not going to need any crazy tools. Um, we're going to need a screwdriver. You might need a file for a part here or there. You might need some pliers, but what I recommend is a 3 8 wrench or socket. Um, you also are going to want a 3 16 drill bit. However, if you get the prints from us, your parts will be pre-drilled, thus not needing it. Um, but I believe that is the basic tools that you're going to need. Nothing crazy. All right, so let's get started on the front half here. Um, what we're going to do first is we're going to take this upper magwell, and we are going to make sure that there isn't any filament in these holes here, because we're going to need to put he hex nuts in these spots. So I like to just kind of shove the threaded rod through and just kind of try and pick it out. You can use pliers, of course. This is just kind of a, a quick and easy way to do it. There we go, some stuff coming out. After that, what you're gonna do is you're gonna put a 1032 hex nut in each one of these holes and put in your threaded rods. Now, technically you only need to turn the threaded rods in just a few turns and technically it'll be okay. I like to just turn it in like a half inch or so. Um, it just kind of makes things line up evenly at the end, I guess. But like I said, not required, but it's a good idea to get them in there so they're definitely secure for sure. Okay. 
Okay, so we've got our three threaded rods in there. We can tell that they're kind of the same length. They're all sticking out about the same. Now we are going to put on our spacer tubing. Um, while I'm here, let's talk about spacer tubing real quick. Um, like I said, might go over this a little more at the end. This is black nylon spacer tubing. There is white available. Um, it looks like this. It's actually a little bit clear. But we also have carbon fiber spacer tubing as well as aluminum spacer tubing. I personally heavily recommend uh, either aluminum or carbon fiber. It is a little pricier, but you know they're, they're solid and the front half of your blaster is gonna be much stronger, much more sturdy, and it really does just help it maintain its, its shape a lot better. These, of course, work. They work just fine, so don't worry if you know it's outside your budget to go for those aluminum or carbon fiber because these will these will do the trick just fine. In fact, if you don't really like the idea of carbon fiber or aluminum, you can get the railgasm print upgrade, which is a it extends this rail up here all the way to the front, and that is a seriously good upgrade as well because of course you can put all sorts of stuff on the top of your blaster, all sorts of attachments. Um, but it also really does promote that sturdiness, like I said, which can help with even accuracy to some degree. So uh, as I was chatting, I threw this foregrip on, just slides on like so. Make sure, you know, it's, it's gripping okay. You know, check these holes, make sure those are clean so it can slide. It should slide just fine. There really shouldn't be any issues there. Now we're gonna take this piece and we are going to put it on like so. Notice that the threaded the the spacer tubing actually feeds in to the orange piece here, and we just want to make sure that that gets in there and that it's not very obviously crooked. Now we just take a hex nut and we put it onto each threaded rod up here. I just got each one started, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use actually a little kind of ghetto drill setup we have going here because it just kind of speeds things up. Now, I didn't tighten it down a ton. As you notice, it still can twist quite a bit and that's on purpose because we need to do some tuning as we go. Um, but yeah, we want these kind of just a little tight, a little snug for us to get started. What we're gonna do now is take a, another hex nut and there's actually a little groove in there, as you can see, a hexagon. We're gonna put that hex nut right in there. Then I like to put my finger in there to hold it in, flip it over, and we're gonna put one of these screws in that hole. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna thread the screw into the hex nut, but not all the way, like don't tighten it down because we still have to put the barrel in. This is a 14 inch default 0.527 inch inner diameter uh, aluminum barrel. This is the default. <clears throat> We're just gonna slide it in through the muzzle, make sure if it hits that nut, make sure the nut is in its groove and make sure that the screw isn't too tight. And we're just gonna thread it through and then put it into its little notch in the receiver and it should look like that. Of course, it's gonna be loose. What we're gonna do to tighten that down is tighten this screw up here. And you can barely see it there. It's actually pushing up against the barrel. We don't wanna tighten it a ton. We don't wanna like scratch up the barrel ridiculously or anything. But now, as I flex it, you can tell the barrel stays in place. The barrel is nice and sturdy. Um, but while we're talking about barrels, this, this is the default, like I said. Uh, there is the 0.509 inch inner diameter barrel and the 0.495 inner diameter barrel, obviously getting tighter. Um, 495 is pretty tight around the darts and 509 is decently tight. Um, as many of you probably know, tighter barrel can mean higher velocity. So there, we actually have a video talking about a lot of this. I highly recommend you go check it out to understand kind of how those barrels work. But in general, tighter barrel can mean more power. Additionally, you can also get a longer barrel, which is as simple as it sounds. We, you can get a, a, an 18 inch barrel as well as a 16 inch barrel if you'd like. Recommend, I personally recommend the 18, but we'll get to that later. Let's continue. <clears throat> what we're gonna do now is, let's go ahead and put on these priming bars. The priming bars, you're gonna take the side with two holes next to each other. 
and feed it through this little groove here, through the receiver, and up to the front. And then as you can see, these holes line up with the holes in the grip. And we are gonna take these four screws and just tighten those down. It's gonna be nice and hand tight, not too much. We don't wanna strip these, these are just aluminum. So let's do that. So right here I'm having trouble because I'm spinning it and it's not gripping. And that's because the bar likes to bend out of the way. So sometimes you kinda gotta fiddle with it. Let's see if I can do this while holding it up for you guys to see. You can toy with the angle Or what you can do is you can reach behind it with something else and kind of push it up. And then that helps you grip it a little better. There we go. And like I said, hand tight. Let's do the other side. Okay, so we've got all four of those bolts in there and the priming bars come out the back and everything is still sliding okay. Just a couple things uh, real quick. Uh, this spacer tubing um, sometimes has, it does have a natural bend to it because we get these in a big roll. So you might notice there's a bit of a curve here and what that may mean is that when you bring it back, you feel a bit more friction when it comes to the back, it kind of seizes. It doesn't stop its functionality, but it does seize a little bit. This can go away over time because these kind of learn to straighten out, but it also depends on how much we tighten down these bolts over here. Um, that's another um, reason as to why I like the aluminum ones or the carbon fiber ones. Sometimes what you can do is you can actually pinch these to kind of bring them inwards. That does help, but sometimes it's just something you gotta toy with to get it working. Now that we've got everything in there, this is way too loose. I mean. If you wanna leave it like that, that's totally up to you. Um, but I want this to be tighter for sure. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do this by hand, just bit by bit as I go. I'm gonna get these tighter. And then I've already tightened these and I can already feel it's much more sturdy. And like for me personally, if this were my caliber, I might just leave it like that. Cause I'm not, I'm usually not trying to twist my blaster for any reason. But if you want it to be nice and rock solid, you want to give it a few more turns for sure. There we go, that's nice and sturdy. I'm applying some reasonable force here and it's not twisting too much. As you tighten these bars down though, something you do want to keep in mind is how straight you're making your blaster. Um, for example, if I tighten down this bolt, if I tighten down this hex nut too much, the barrel is actually gonna point down to the right. But I am currently looking down the blaster now, and it looks like I just have a very slight curve downwards. It's pretty hard to show on the camera. It's straight like so, but what, what I need to do to point it up is just tighten the top one. Even just a couple turns can straighten it out nicely. Yeah, that looks better. So we'll roll with that. Right now it's sturdy and we are ready to move on. Okay. So here is the RAM core and RAM base. The RAM base is printed from PLA and this is a default RAM core. This works, do keep that in mind. This, is, this totally works and this will get your blaster depending on springs up to pretty decently high FPSs. However, if you want a better air seal and therefore more power, I highly recommend that you get a RAM core with a notch. Um, this notch, will have an O-ring put on it. And with this O-ring, it will seal into the barrel better and therefore deliver more air to the dart and out the other side. So like I said, highly recommend this. This cut here is the dog bone Vanguard cut, upgrade, whatever you want to call it. And uh, when this sits in the receiver, it allows a magazine to come around. And that just lets you kind of remove the magazine whenever you want. You don't need to drop or you don't need to pump it in order to remove or add a magazine, which is pretty cool, um, but not exactly necessary for performance. If you want performance, notch for sure. If you want durability, you can get an aluminum or a Delrin RAM base. I highly recommend this actually. It is a bit pricier, but you do get your money's worth because these last forever. They don't break and they provide very good air seals 
Um, I personally have this in my Calibern and I'm really glad I got it because after a while, my plastic one just kind of wore out and slowly lost its seal. That just, it does happen. Plastic doesn't keep its shape forever. Um, so if you really want to go all the nine yards, get an aluminum one for sure. But this is definitely a good middle ground that'll still get you the performance and durability that you want. So a little bit of a tangent, but um, here we have the base. It's already assembled, but yours, you will get the plastic base separately and the RAM core separately. They won't be assembled yet. What you're going to do, if you have a press, definitely use a press, but you can put a little bit of super glue around the RAM core if you want, that's optional. But what you're going to do is you can either put it like so and set the RAM core on top and try and do it by hand. If you can't do it by hand, then just get a hammer and tap it on or you can tap it on like so. Just be careful not to bend this aluminum. Use maybe a rubber hammer or some, uh, a mallet or something like that. Uh, it's really up to you as to how you want to do it. Um, and it's important to keep in mind that you try and make sure, try your best to make sure that the RAM car goes straight in to the RAM base, otherwise it'll be crooked. So this one's already straight, it's already been pressed in. Sorry I couldn't show you guys that, it was just already done before that we started filming. But here it is. Now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna put this in the blaster. But what I'm gonna do first is anchor the RAM base a little bit. So you can do this with a screwdriver or a drill. If you're doing it with a drill, um, I highly recommend you use a low torque setting because it'll be it's pretty easy to strip these spots. I like to do like the first bit by drill and then finish it off with a screwdriver. So that way I can get just the right fit that I want. So boom, that's nice and tight all the way in there. Um, what I'm doing here is it doesn't matter actually the orientation, but I like to imagine that these notches are horizontal. So therefore I like to put a, a bolt top or yeah, top and bottom. So we're going to do these two or just this other one. All right, so with these two in there, they're actually pinching on the RAM core. The RAM core is not coming out now. We're gonna throw on our one, two, three O-ring and we're gonna put on the shock pad. A quick tip to peel off this paper on the shock pad, I highly recommend just folding it like a taco and kind of giving that, that rub around and then it comes right off and it doesn't peel the adhesive layer off as well. The adhesive layer is still there. If yours does come off, you can always just glue it, so don't worry. Then we're just gonna press that on, get it nice and centered. And there we are, good to go. Let's throw that in there. What we're gonna do is slide in like so. And then as you can tell, these priming bars just fit into these grooves and we're gonna line up those holes like that. Perfect. And then we're gonna put in the remaining 440 screws into these holes at about the same tightness as the top and bottom ones, nice and hand tight. So we got those tightened down and now the RAM, RAM base setup is completely installed. And I'm already seeing some good signs here. I can tell that the gap here shows that the, the RAM core is nice and straight. And if I look at it like this, it's also nice and straight, which is a great sign. Now, this is the tricky part of the front half. Sometimes something goes wrong and it's not a very smooth fit into the barrel. Fortunately though, this one turned out okay. When we bring it forward, you can feel it bump the edge of the barrel, which isn't a huge issue, but most importantly, we can slide it in and out with any serious, without any serious friction. Um, if yours is rubbing quite significantly in there, what you wanna do is make sure that your RAM base, your RAM core is nice and straight in the RAM base, as well as your RAM base, nice and straight in these priming bars. Um, some tips to getting it to work Sometimes what you can do is you can actually loosen the two screws, these two screws on either side, which will actually let this RAM base, uh, this RAM core wiggle a little bit. And that can actually be a good thing because if it wiggles, it will, when it gets up here, just center itself and fall right into place and fit properly. But as of now, this one is looking good. And we can go forward and back nicely. Oh, and one more thing. If it's still really crooked, double check that your barrel is nice and straight. If, even if your barrel is off like that, if you tighten down one of these bolts too much, that can, it can contribute as to why the ram, base does, ram core does not slide nicely into the barrel. So there's that mouthful. Let's put on the trench and then the muzzle brake and the front half will be done. 
this trench just fits over like so. Make sure that you press it on. Sometimes it doesn't line up perfectly and you just need to press it around these nuts and it will kind of click on. Um, but make sure it's all the way on there. And now we're just gonna take a 440 screw and tighten that down. And same for this, it's just that the screw sits on the bottom. All right, so there's the muzzle assembly. We don't see any gaps, any big gaps, so we're looking good. And that is the front half of the caliber all assembled. All right, so we're gonna get started on the rear half, but before we even get to the rear half, I like to do the kind of modular assembly, get like a piece ready to put into another piece. So we're gonna do the, the, the rear grip the trigger handle real quick. Uh, this is pretty simple. It's going to go hopefully pretty nicely. What you're going to do is you're going to take the standoff, the threaded standoff, and you're going to put it in the middle of this sear here and kind of grip it like so. And we're going to take our extension spring and hook it around this peg like so. And then uh, what we need to do is we need to feed this down through this groove and as you can see right there, ooh, there's actually a little peg in the grip. And what we're gonna do is put the eyelet of this extension spring around that peg, like so. It's in there. And then we're gonna fold the sear down into its groove. And then you can already see that this hole is lined up for us to put in some 440 screws, just one on either side, nice and hand tight, not too much. There we go. After you get that in there, make sure that it moves okay. And most importantly, that it snaps back. Looking great. Now let's put in the trigger. The trigger, I like to put it up through the bottom like so. And it's gonna actually fit under the sear like that. And then what you gotta do is, you see that hole on the trigger? We need to feed a pin through there. So I'm actually looking through this hole here and watching for light to come through. And I can tell when the holes are lined up. There you go. And as soon as that happens, I'm going to push a pin through. And uh, sometimes the pin is a tricky fit. Sometimes things are a little tight. If you need to, you can drill it a little wider. That does happen occasionally with the prints. But the pin is actually in inside the trigger. So it's somewhere in here. What we then want to do is put a 440 screw on either side. Now this is how I like to do it. If you want, you can put a 440 screw on one on either side to begin with, so that way the pin doesn't fall out. Uh, this is just the way that I like to do it, like I said. Do make sure that the pin is actually in the trigger. Make sure like when you pull the trigger, you see that it's pivoting around that point. If the pin isn't through this, the trigger and this, you risk pushing the pin into the plastic and lodging it in there. So just be extra careful and make sure that the pin is where it needs to be. So in fact, I can already tell right here the pin is not through the left side of the trigger, but it is on the right. Hopefully you can see that. So I'm going to try and just push it with my own strength. There we go. Into the other side. So that way we know it's going to feed into that hole properly and not punch a hole in the plastic and be stuck. When you tighten down these 440s, notice that the filament line is this way. If you tighten them down too much, it might split the plastic. So just not too tight. And same goes for down here with the trigger guard. Uh, what we're gonna do is just slide the trigger guard into this groove. Sometimes it's a tight fit. So don't worry if you have to push it a little. If you really can't get it to fit, just file it down to make sure it goes in nicely. And what we do here is just a 440 screw on either side once again. And there we are, there's the handle. Trigger guard is nice and secure, the sear moves properly and the trigger moves the sear properly. So that's that. After assembling the handle, I like to immediately assemble the lower magwell and mag release just because they're very similar. 
it's a lot like the trigger in sear. So what we're gonna do, just like the trigger, is this piece, like so, is going to feed into this groove, and that hole is going to line up with this hole here. And once again, I'm looking for the light to poke through to make sure that I'm lined up properly. And as soon as I think I have it, I grip it and put the pin in. And notice the pin is only out here, but it's still in there. So I'm gonna just finish pushing it through to the other side, like I said with the trigger. And there we go, that's secure. I'm gonna be careful not to tilt it to either side so that way the pin doesn't fall out. And now we just put a 440 screw on either side to secure it. And there we go. Magalise moves okay. The pin is in there, nice and secure. We're gonna take our second extension spring and we are going, I like to do it like this. I like to put it in here and hook it around that pit peg just like that. So in and then down. And then while you have it, just pinch it and bring it down and hook it over the mag release, just like that. You can use like pliers or even a screwdriver if you want, it does help to do that. But this is what we're looking for. All right, now for the easy part, the rear half. This, this usually goes by like a breeze. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take the long threaded rod and one of the hex nuts and put it into this little groove deep in there. Hold it in a little bit and then thread our rod right through it. Um, as for the distance that I like to go, I like to go to about here, kind of where this edge ends. Like, you know, it's like a half inch or so. I like to do that on the bottom too, just because if you want to switch out your front half with a mega front half, um, the mega front half upper magwell actually doesn't fit nicely if these are too long. So that's kind of my reasoning behind it. Really kind of doesn't matter, but you obviously don't want them sticking out too much. We were just gonna do the other side. All right, so boom, we just did all three. Uh, Really self-explanatory, not much to show there. Um, as for the distance of this top rod, I like to have it stick out about this much because what we like to do after we finish assembling the blaster is, this is obviously upside down, but I'm using it to judge the distance, is we like to put a hex nut and then an acorn nut on top of it here. Just, it helps them you know, not fall off so easily as well as secure the, uh, the sturdiness of the blaster overall. Um, but that's up to you, you know, the length that you want. If you don't want it showing at all, you can leave it back. Um, but I like to keep it about right there. Now, these two holes down here, we're gonna put these little black pins in. It was a little tight, but that's okay. And then the handle is going to slide like so over these two bottom rods. And then these pins are gonna fit into the holes on the handle. This does not apply to the talon claw. Actually, yes it does. Maybe, I can't remember. Two pins up top. And then this piece with the rails pointing forwards slides on next and then around those pins. And then two more pins in the back of this. Really, really wonderful design. And then this piece, the Kiri, slides on like so. If it's a little stuck, just kind of twist it as you go. It kind of helps it give it some light taps. And then boom, that slides on. Piece of cake. Now you're gonna take your stock space, uh, stock spacer tube, I believe. Um, and this just slides right in here. Um, you can get these in different colors, but this one's just default. Doesn't really affect anything other than cosmetics. Now we're gonna put this piece on like so. And now we're gonna thread a nut onto each rod and then tighten those down pretty snug. You don't need to worry about anything being straight here. It will be straight, there's no question. Um, just tighten each one down pretty evenly. So 
So I know these are nice and tight. When I try and twist it like this, I don't hear any movement or feel any clicking around. Um, when you put these nuts on in the back, make sure that they don't spin up front because they'll lose their spot. It might end up moving forward or back. So I like to kind of just keep a finger here as I screw on the ones in the back. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put this rod here with the spacer tubing. Um, a quick mention here is you can get this cosmetic upgrade, the thumb hole stop, the thumb hole grip stock thingy, thumb hole grip, I think. Um, and it comes with a little spacer tubing. Uh, if you're putting this in there, it, it, it works pretty simply. You just kind of snap it in and then, you, and then you put the rod on. If you do it like so, I recommend an acorn nut in the back and a hex nut up here. Um, but you'll figure it out as you go. It's not too bad, honestly. What we're gonna do is put the rod in, put it on our spacer tubing, and then bring it through to this hole in the handle back here. You can also get a grip insert that fits into this groove here. A nice little cosmetic upgrade. It makes the grip a little bit more comfortable. But we don't have one, so we're just gonna put an acorn nut here. And I like to bottom out the acorn nut and then push it back over here and then just put a hex nut. And when we tighten this down, we don't want this to be so tight that we watch this piece bend, but we also don't want, to, don't want it to be so loose that this spacer tubing bends. So mine's a little loose, so I'm gonna tighten it down just a bit more. There we go. So looking good. Um, I recommend this if you have bigger hands like me. It just gives your hand more room. Uh, it doesn't really, it, I guess it kind of helps it be a little bit more sturdy, but you don't really need to worry about this in the rear half. It's it's just sturdy all around. Um, but if you if you don't mind, um, you can definitely if you don't mind having a little bit of a small little less room for your thumb here, then you can definitely put in that rear attachment. It does look pretty cool. Now we're going to take this piece here, and we are going to reinforce it by sliding a hex nut down this groove. That did not go in there straight. Let's try again. There we go. We got the hex nut in there nice and straight. And then we're gonna slide in one of these screws from the back and tighten that down. This helps this spring guide uh, be much stronger. So pretty important. Um, this is a normal default stock. You can get an adjustable stock, uh, which is pretty cool. And even if you don't want to adjust your stock, it does look cool. It's got like a nice kind of shroud around the back here. Um, not entirely necessary. This, this stock in the back is nice and simple. Um, but the adjustable stock is not too hard to put together at all. Just a few more screws. Now we are going to put a hex nut up here. And we're gonna make that nice and tight. We don't want this one to be loose because this is actually gonna hold the spring. It's gonna keep the spring in the blaster. And we're gonna put one here in that nice little cutout. And we're gonna put the butt on. Now, uh, if you guys want, we'll s each hardware kit comes with a few extra hex nuts. Uh, you can put those extra ones here. It's not entirely necessary but you can put those there if you want. And then, uh, like you just saw, the butt goes on and this screw feeds through this hole. Notice I'm keeping my thumb here, it's to hold that nut in there. And now we're just gonna thread that and tighten it down pretty snug. So now we have the nut up there and then this entire bolt securing this black plate in there, so nice and strong. And that is the rear half. Okay, so now that we've got the two halves assembled and our lower bagwell ready to go, let's throw the whole thing together. So we're gonna do the last few steps. We're gonna take an O-ring, throw it around our plunger. Um, I'll talk more about this later. Uh, this is a PLA plunger, of course. You can get an aluminum or a Delrin or acetyl, whatever it's called, uh, plunger as well. These are nice and durable, long lasting, great seal. This looks cool. In fact, it'll kind of give your blaster a little bit of kick. It's got some, it's got a good weight to it. It kind of gives a nice thud when you fire, which is really cool. Um, I personally have this in my in my Calibrin, but these really will last a long time and you'll maintain a great air, air seal. 
So yeah, O-ring on the plunger. I'll talk more about that later. This is using a K25 spring. I'll talk about springs later as well, but this is kind of a, a middle ground spring. And we're gonna take our plunger tube and we are gonna put some lubricant on it. If you get it, if you get the hardware kit from us, your plunger tube will already have a little bit of lubricant in there. Just kind of spread it around. This is the lubricant that we like to use. What I'm gonna do is just put some around one of the edges here, like that, and then spread the rest right around the O-ring on the plunger. I mean, there's a thousand ways to skin a cat. It doesn't really matter how you do this as long as it just gets spread around in there. I like to put a little bit in the front and then spread the rest around the back there. We're gonna take the rear half, slide our spring in, make sure it goes around the spring guide, and then we're gonna slide the plunger on. And I'm not actually gonna slide the plunger all the way back just yet, just because I don't want things to get messy. Gonna put the lower, notice that movement. It fits in like so, and then moves forward. And uh, the moment of truth, we are going to feed the plunger tube around the O-ring there. Um, make sure that you come on nice and straight and that the O-ring stays in its groove. If you come on crooked, it might pinch the O-ring, even damage it possibly. So yeah, just make sure you come on nice and straight and that the O-ring feeds evenly. And now we're just gonna continue sliding everything together. Um, we're watching the back here and we're actually gonna help the plunger fit into its groove back there and then finish pushing it all together. There we go. Uh, it, it is now a very large blaster and it's hard to fit into frame. So bear with me if I'm super awkward about the angles. Um, we're really close. We're not done though. I mean, it's already splitting apart. What we need to do now is we need to drill the magwell to 3 16 while holding it together. Um, and just a reminder, if you got these prints from us, they should already be drilled. But um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold it together as best as I can. Sometimes it's, I mean, just the way prints are, sometimes it's not perfect. There's a little bit of a gap here, that's okay. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna drill here on the other side and then across here in each of these holes. Um, I recommend a nice and sharp drill bit. Uh, if you have a dull one, it's it might melt the plastic and just kind of be a pain, it'll work, but you just gotta be more careful. Um, you do need to be careful about what speed you drill. Just kind of watch what I do and maybe try and mimic it your best or just use your best judgment really. Um, just make sure you don't go too deep. So what I like to do is I like to hold the drill bit about right here and kind of take a mental picture of how deep I'm gonna go because this is where it bottoms out. So I'm gonna take that mental picture and say, okay, that's how deep I need to go. And then as I come closer to the end, I'm actually gonna, I'm really paying attention to what I feel. And I can feel when it hits the bottom. As long as I don't push too hard, it's not gonna bite any deeper. So I got deep enough and then just pull it out. And I'm just gonna do one or two more passes just to get the gunk out and boom, that hole's done. Let's do the other side. And across. With those holes drilled, we'll put in our pins. One across and two from the top. Uh, if you drill too much, the pins are gonna fit a little loosely and that can be a bit of a pain. Um, so yeah, just make sure you don't drill too much and drill them too wide. Um, but yeah, these are nice and snug. They're not gonna just fall out. And now the two halves are together, which is great. So this isn't entirely necessary, but one last thing we like to do to finish it is put, like I said earlier, a hex nut up here and tighten that down. Our wrench is kind of too big to fit into that groove, so I'm actually gonna cheat and just use these needle nose real quick. I'm not gonna tighten this down a ton. If I tighten it too much, it'll actually bend the entire blaster upwards in some worst case scenarios. So just get it nice and snug. There we go, that's on. And I like to just put a, an acorn nut on top of that because it looks nice. And that's why we were focused on getting the distance just right on that threaded rod earlier. 
there we go. So that's nice and closed up. And now we don't see any gaps. It's nice and lined up. And I can't really show this angle, but if I look straight down the blaster, everything is nice and straight, which is wonderful. And that is the Caliburn from start to finish. Let's see how it feels. There we go, we got that nice click. Bring it forward, nice and smooth. And now I'm gonna plug the barrel here to see how the air seal is. Yeah, it's not a crazy good air seal because we don't have an upgraded ram core. The ram core is just bare. So there's not really any seal going on up here. Like I said, if you get the uh, the notch on the ram base, it already, or on the ram core, it makes a huge difference. But there we go. Let's put a couple rounds through it. So to load it, we're just gonna pump it back, throw in the mag, it's stuck in there. Our mag release is working, that's great. Push it all the way forward and we're ready to fire. Great. Okay, so here's the part where I'm just gonna info dump all of the recommendations and just tips I have about what to get on your Caliburn. Um, this isn't gonna be organized in any way, probably. So just bear with me. I'm just gonna spew a bunch of information and hopefully these tips are useful for you. Um, I have my own Caliburn um, and I, I really, really like it. And you can get crazy good performance out of these Caliburns if you choose the right upgrades. I talked about a lot of this stuff earlier in the video, so some of it's gonna be repetitive, but let's chat. Um, I guess starting front to back, barrel. This is a default barrel. Um, default is default, and that's fine. It'll totally work. I have a default barrel in my blaster because I don't want to be too powerful and not be able to play at events, you know? <laughs> but if you get a 0.509 barrel, it's going to be tighter, higher velocity, 0.495, even tighter, even tighter, higher velocity as well. And you can choose lengths of your barrels. I think we have the option of up to even 24 inches. Um, that's a little overkill, maybe. But um, additionally, you can get a brass barrel and a brass breech. I recognize that brass is darn cool. And with brass internals, with brass barrel and brass breech, you can get some really solid performance and perfect air seals. It's true. However, brass can be finicky and can be a little delicate. It's not the strongest. Um, even if you bump your barrel, the wrong way. If you bump it on a tree while you're out nerfing, it can it can be damaged. So that's just something you got to keep in mind. Brass isn't perfectly you know sturdy. Um, so unless you really, my personal recommendation, okay, you do whatever you want, but personally, if you want brass, um, brass, I would recommend if you're doing like the real sniper play style, you want really high performance. You don't want to have to focus on rapid firing a lot. You want to be able to take your time with your shots and make sure that you're using your blaster gently. Then, then yeah, brass all the way. But you can get very similar performance with normal parts as compared to brass. So you don't need to get brass. However, it is cool. Not going to lie. Um, yeah, I recommend definitely aluminum or carbon fiber spacer tubing with or without a railgasm is up to you. I think the railgasm just looks cool. Uh, but those help with front end sturdiness. And yeah, um, as for the ram core, I highly recommend this with a notch and the dog bone. Um, and as for the ram base, I definitely recommend um, aluminum or Delrin. These are nice and sturdy. They're not gonna wear out. They're not gonna break on you. Um, and they're not gonna lose their air seal over time. I've replaced all the internals on my Caliburn because they just, the PLA slowly lost its fit and the air seal slowly got worse. So that's what I recommend there. You can get really good performance out of that. Um, as for plungers, you can also get Delrin or aluminum, very durable, better seal, but PLA works just fine. If you're not trying to squeeze every FPS that you can out of your caliber, then don't worry about it. Just get plastics, totally cool. Um, but Aluminum is shiny, you know, <laughs> so sometimes it's great to go with aluminum and it gives a nice thud when you fire. It's pretty, pretty cool. Um, springs, K14 is the strongest spring. It's a bit much. Even I, I'm a bigger guy and it's, it's sometimes a bit of a pain to prime a K14. I mean, sure, your blaster is going to hit like a truck, 
but it, you're gonna you're gonna be pretty sore after a little bit. Um, if you do get a K14, highly highly recommend coupler inserts. These fit inside this red piece here and strengthen your blaster a lot. They basically it makes this part impervious to breakage. Um, so highly recommend that if you do get a K14, even a K26 might be a good idea. Um, K26 is the next strongest. That's what I have. Um, solid spring, K25, next lower. We have info on this on the site if you want to know more. Grip insert is a cosmetic that you can have here. Makes the grip a little bit more comfortable. Thumb hole, I showed you earlier. Um, also cosmetic, but does look kind of cool if you have big hands, maybe not. Um, foregrips, all sorts of foregrips out there. Um, they're all great, really. They're all great. So I, I got nothing to say there. I personally have an angled foregrip. You can get an adjustable stock. It is, in fact, adjustable. Um, but even if you don't want an adjustable stock, you just want it to look cool back here, get, you get an adjustable stock for sure. There are all sorts of shrouds and stuff that you can put over the whole blaster. Um, there's all sorts of stuff. I, mean, I could go on for a while. But yeah, basically the overall rule of thumb is if you want high performance, look at barrel upgrades look at ram base upgrades and look at plunger upgrades you can also get an aluminum sear from us not entirely necessary but it is cool to have like all aluminum parts for sure and it is of course more durable i have yet to see a sear wear out so there's that but i'm not going to tell you not to get one they are cool um but yeah i think that's about oh and one more thing the magwell you can get a magwell printed that takes talon mags or and or katana mags it's actually a wild card magwell um but you can't take elite mags um if you want versatility definitely get the elite magwell the default so you can shoot elite darts but you can get aftermarket little uh, mag adapters or you can we actually have a printed um wild card adapter that we sell as well that will let you use both katana and talon mags in an elite caliber and it's great i mean you you can use three different types of magazines at a, at a nerf battle that's all the info i really have about the uh caliber great blaster highly recommended if you're looking into getting into this custom nerf stuff get a caliber for sure it's so good it's, it just really kicks butt and uh super reliable and um really really well designed props to captain slug there and remember all these things i've said about the caliber those are my opinion and my personal recommendations they do come from a decent amount of evidence i've built hundreds of caliburns probably um and i've gone to lots of nerf events but um really you can you can choose whatever you want it's totally up to you that's one of the best parts about the caliber but those were those are just my recommendations and i'm sure there's there's a difference in opinion in some cases, but that's totally fine. But yeah, there's the Caliburn. Start to finish, great blaster, go get one. Thanks for watching, guys.